Welcome to this tutor to you revision video that looks at what global biomes are and runs through the characteristics of the main ones. This is part of paper one, unit B, the living world. We're going to start off by defining what we mean by global biome. A biome is a large scale ecosystem and its characteristics are defined by abiotic factors, which are non-living environmental factors. They're known for their dominant type of vegetation, such as the tropical rainforest or the taiga. Global biomes form broad belts following lines of latitude. This is because their climate is dictated by global atmospheric circulation, which we've covered in a separate video. Variations in vegetation are due to distance from the sea, ocean currents, winds, geology, soils, altitude and relief. So for example, the altitude will temperatures will fall with height above sea level. This is because the air is thinner so it cannot retain as much heat. As a result, trees are replaced by tough grasses on steep mountains. If we think about ocean currents, cold ocean currents create dry conditions because of a lack of evaporation, whereas the warm Gulf Stream current makes countries in Western Europe warmer than they should be due to their latitude. And if we consider mountain ranges, these force air to rise upwards, leading to relief rainfall over mountainous areas. But this means that moisture is quickly lost, so the land on the other side of the mountain range is dry, which is known as a rain shadow. We are now going to give you a quick overview of the main characteristics of the different global biomes. Let's start off with tropical rainforests. Tropical rainforests lie along or close to the equator and can be found in South America, Central Africa, Southeast Asia and Australia. Here the sun's rays are concentrated which means the high temperatures cause evaporation and the moist air that rises leads to heavy rainfall with very little seasonal variation. This belt of low pressure along the equator creates ideal conditions for plant growth which is why the vegetation is so lush. Rainforests cover approximately 6% of the Earth's land surface, however they are home to more than 50% of all animal and plant species and they provide the ingredients of 25% of all medicines. Okay, moving on to the hot desert biome. Hot deserts lie roughly 30 degrees north and south of the equator, close to the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. Here the sun's rays are still very concentrated but the air is sinking here which means that clouds don't form so the air is very dry resulting in a high pressure belt and arid conditions. The lack of cloud means that the temperatures are high during the day but they plummet overnight. The conditions in the desert biome are extremely harsh so animals and plants have to be well adapted to survive. We're going to talk about the tropical grasslands biome next, which is also known as the savanna, and it may be familiar to those of you that have seen the Lion King. Savanna grasslands lie between 15 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator, between tropical rainforests and hot deserts. This biome has distinct wet and dry seasons due to the Hadley cell. The dry season is longer and it can be extremely hot with wildfires common, whereas the wet season can see torrential downpours and intense thunderstorms. Savannah grasslands are characterised by few trees and are home to large grazing animals such as giraffes, elephants and zebras, along with predators such as lions and cheetahs. Let's have a look at a different grassland biome. This time we're going to have a look at temperate grasslands such as the Eastern European steppes and the North American prairies. Temperate grasslands lie around 40 degrees north and south of the equator. They're in lands they experience hot summers and cold winters as they don't benefit from the seasonal warming and cooling effects from the sea. This biome is dominated by short tussock and feathered grasses and the land is mainly used for grazing. Let's move on to the Mediterranean biome. The Mediterranean biome lies around 40 degrees north and south of the equator in southern Europe, California in the USA, South Africa and Western Australia and it is characterised by hot and dry summers and mild winters. Vegetation includes small drought resistant trees and evergreen shrubs as well as olive trees and citrus trees such as oranges and lemons. 
So we learned about the deciduous forest in the last video on small scale ecosystems, but let's have a quick recap of this biome. Deciduous forests lie in higher latitudes, roughly between 50 and 60 degrees north of the equator in places such as Western Europe and North America. The climate tends to be quite wet due to the jet stream bringing in rain and deciduous trees lose their leaves during the winter to retain moisture, but also because there is less opportunity to, for photosynthesis because of the reduced sunshine. OK, let's have a quick look at the coniferous forest biome, which is also known as the taiga. Coniferous forests are found roughly 60 degrees north of the equator in places such as Scandinavia, Canada and northern Russia. Winter is bitterly cold in this biome because of the Earth's tilt, there is very little sunlight for several months. Coniferous trees have needles instead of leaves which retain heat and moisture during the cold, dark winters. And they are also evergreen, meaning that they can maximise photosynthesis during the short summers. Now moving on to a biome that many of you will have studied as part of the optional cold environments topic. This is a tundra. The tundra lies about 60 to 70 degrees north to the Arctic Circle in Northern Europe and Canada. This biome experiences very cold, windy and dry conditions. It's below freezing for much of the year. And this is because of the angle of solar radiation, meaning the sun's rays are spread out over a large area. The land is frozen for much of the year and when it is not frozen, the surface ice thaws leading to waterlogging. Plants and animals are well adapted to survive the cold. For example, plants are low growing to withstand the wind and retain heat and moisture. The tundra is fragile and it's threatened by oil and mineral exploration as well as tourism. And we're going to round off the video with a quick look at the coldest of all the biomes. The polar biome lies within the Arctic and Antarctic circles. Cold air sinks here so the temperatures are extremely low and they can drop to minus 50 degrees. There is very little precipitation, making the poles officially deserts. The main polar regions are Antarctica and Greenland where the land is permanently frozen and there are very few plants and animals in this biome as the conditions are so harsh. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on global biomes and their different characteristics. Thank you for watching.